Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Balanced Blonde Podcast, Soul on Fire. I'm your host, Jordan Younger. And if today is your first time listening to the show, then welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. I have to be so honest with you guys and tell you that I have recorded this introduction a hundred times because I am so extremely honored to have Catherine and India Oxenberg as my guests on today's podcast and doing them justice and the story they have to tell and the experiences that both of these women have been through is just something that I am struggling to do in words. And I'm truly enamored by both of these women and everything they've been through and everything they continue to go through as they heal and meet new challenges on this journey and continue to unfold their beautiful lives as mother and daughter who are reunited. So if you are unfamiliar with India and Catherine Oxenberg and their story, then, oh my gosh, you guys have so much to learn and you are in for a treat because this episode is expansive, it's beautiful, it's healing, it's heart-wrenching, it's fascinating, it's so brave. And I do want to include a trigger warning. In this episode, we discuss some heavy topics, topics that we have not yet discussed on the Balanced Blonde show, and topics that I'm very, very honored and privileged to be able to talk to these two women about which was all about India's experience in the sex cult, Nexium, also known as Executive Success Programs, and her mother, Catherine's experience trying to get her out of this cult for many years. So some of what India experienced in Nexium we get into in this conversation. We don't get into all of it because I really would have needed to talk to them for hours and hours and hours to get all the info out and ask all the questions that I wanted to. And I wanted this conversation to be able to flow in a really organic, really beautiful way. And it definitely did. So again, trigger warning, this is a conversation about cults and escaping a cult and these brave women's story of everything that they have been through. So just some of what we get into in this episode was India's experience in Nexium and Catherine's experience trying to get her daughter out of Nexium once she realized she was in a dangerous situation. And I will leave the rest up to India to tell her story, but I'm sure you've heard about Nexium and the branding, the sex trafficking, the racketeering, the horrible master slave rituals in which India and other women were not allowed to eat a sufficient amount of calories, were not allowed to get a sufficient amount of sleep, and basically were forced to recruit other members in beneath them. Very, very dark and twisted. So I'm sure you've heard about Nexium because it has been all over the media lately in so many different ways and for so many different reasons because thank goodness Keith Ranieri, the leader of the cult, was sentenced to 120 years in prison just a few weeks ago, and India was present to give her victim impact statement. I'm so proud of her. It was so beautiful. And you may have also heard of Nexium because of The Vow on HBO, which Catherine was featured very prominently in, as well as Seduced on Stars, which is India's documentary that she produced and also starred in and shared her brave story. So there is endless stuff to dive into when it comes to all things Nexium and beyond, which is also known as executive success programs. And I just want to give a little brief background info here that I have been a diehard obsessed researcher of cults for as long as I can remember. I have studied cult psychology coercion of the mind. I've been interested in it since I was a kid. And I've probably been so interested in it because I've been a spiritual seeker for as long as I can remember since I was a young adolescent. And I know that those of us who are sensitive and those of us who are seeking a deeper meaning in life, we're very susceptible to trusting people who could very easily take advantage. And also, we are not interested in living an average life, a life where we just follow the status quo. We are interested in living a deep life, a life where we really seek who we are and ask those deeper questions and help the world in those deeper ways. 
So I very much see how easy it could be to be coerced into something that seems like it is a beautiful self-help program, a beautiful community that is looking to make the world a better place and then eventually over time be broken down and ultimately brainwashed, which is what happened to India and happened to many, many other people, specifically women in Nexium, and then the deeper part of Nexium called DOS. So I could go on. I'm really eager to get into this conversation and excited. I have to say this is one of my favorite episodes I've ever done on the podcast, and this is the reason why I podcast. This is the reason why... I started this show in the first place is to talk to people who are truly and honestly doing amazing things for the world and sharing from the bravest, most deep parts of their hearts in their most vulnerable times and leading a life that is truly extraordinary in every way. And I can say that with such ease about both India Oxenberg and her mother, Catherine Oxenberg. So just a little bit of background. When we did this interview, my mom was there. So this was like a mother-daughter Hang out. We got to do this in Catherine's backyard. And the connection that I felt to both of these women and my mom felt too was so instant. It was like instant soul family, lifelong. Like, oh my gosh, I felt like I had known these women my whole entire life. And that is such a testament to how incredibly warm, incredibly deeply spiritual, and open and loving both of these women are. And I'm so honored to know them. I'm so honored to call them friends. And I know, I just have this feeling that I know that they're going to be in my life for the rest of forever. I know this to be true. I feel such connection to them in a very deep heart-centered kind of way. And I can't get enough of them. My mom and I can't get enough of them. We've been talking daily about the expansive, beautiful, heart-wrenching and heart-opening conversation that we got to have with them. So even though my mom wasn't on the mic for this interview, she's very much part of the conversation. You'll be able to feel her energy. My beautiful mother, Jane, she's been on this podcast before. Many of you know her. She's my best friend. And India and Catherine remind me so much of a lot of parallels between my mom and I. And these women are just heroic and I love them. They are soul family. They are part of my heart forever and ever now. And I'm never letting go of them. So I'm just thrilled, 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 thrilled for this episode. And before we dive into the episode, I would love to thank our sponsor, Sakara. So I have been a very big fan of Sakara ever since my New York City days as the blonde vegan when I first met Whitney and Danielle who started Sakara Life and I was just so enamored by everything that they were doing and their beautiful, delicious, nourishing plant-based food. And the only plant-based meal delivery service that I recommend to people has been Sakara for the last six or seven years. So ever since those NYC days. And first of all, you should know, you can get early access to their Black Friday sale, their only sale of the year with 25% site-wide with the code BLONDE25. And that is 25% off your entire order at sakara.com with BLONDE25. So To tell you a little bit about Sakara, they're a nutrition company that focuses on overall wellness, starting with what you eat. They have a menu of ready-to-eat chef-crafted breakfast, lunches, and dinners that changes weekly so you'll never get bored. And it's delivered fresh anywhere in the U.S. A couple of my favorite things, because not only are they a meal delivery service, but they also have products. They have these incredible wellness products that are phenomenal. I'm obsessed with their super powders and their supplements. So what I've been taking every day, which I highly recommend, is their metabolism powder. My friend Bridget introduced me into putting the metabolism powder into my coffee. So that's my favorite thing in the morning. It's superfoods, really good for your metabolism. Also their greens powder, which is protein and greens, which I find myself mixing into smoothies or just mixing into water or nut milk if I need a little bit of extra greens during the day. 
And then also their probiotic, which is chocolate, which I think is the coolest thing in the world. So it's probiotics, good for your gut, and it's chocolate, tastes so good. And if you're interested in the meal delivery aspect, which is definitely what they're known for, you can reach all of your health goals with Sakara's food. It's 100% plant-based. It's known to restore digestive harmony, regulate cravings, help you shed excess weight, and make you glow from the inside out. Their entire brand is so spot on. I'm such a fan. I have been forever. And the founders, Whitney and Danielle, have been on the podcast if you'd like to listen. So for a limited time only, Sakara is granting you early access to their only sale of the entire year with 25% site-wide with the code BLONDE25. That is 25% off your entire order when you go to sakara.com and enter BLONDE25 at checkout. That is BLONDE25 at checkout for 25% off your entire order at Sakara, S-A-K-A-R-A.com. Okay, let's head into this episode with India and Catherine. Your life is about to change and these women are about to get right into your hearts. I am so excited. India Oxenberg, Catherine Oxenberg, I am so honored to be sitting with you right now. This is just so exciting to be in your home and to to connect with the both of you after just feeling like I know you. (laughs) After watching (laughs) both documentaries, both The Vow, which Catherine, you're so prominent in and such an absolute hero in The Vow. And then seduced your own documentary that you produced, you starred in. (laughs) So impressive, India. Thank you. So let's just kind of start from the beginning. How did you both get involved in Nexium and ESP? I know you got involved together. Yeah, we did. We did. Thanks, mom. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I don't really look. I mean, we went together. We were invited, actually recruited by a friend of ours who we trusted and Mm -hmm. who was kind of the person that really referred us to a lot of different things in in the Los Angeles area. So we had a history with her and we cared about her and liked her. And when she told us about executive success programs, which is basically Nexium's consumer product, uh, Nexium being the umbrella, we thought it was interesting. So we decided to go to an intro and there was something about it that really spoke to me at the time. I'm, I was 19 years old. Yeah. I was looking for direction and I was feeling really aimless and lost in my life. And I thought, well, maybe I just need some skills and some tools. And I just turned to my mom and I was like, do you want to do this with me? Like as a bonding experience? And she said, yes. I think she was so surprised that I had some conviction at the point. <laughs> it was like, yes, okay. at the age of 19. You know, it was right. so bizarre so because yeah. I did not like the introduction at all. I was like yawning and bored, even though she thought I was into it. And then I was so ready to get out of there. And she goes, yes, it was the fact that she went, this is for me. And I had never heard her respond that to anything. And I have very weird. dragged her to a lot of different <laughs> programs before. Yeah. We had, you know, <laughs> Ashra, we've up seen there some things. Of oh, yes. And yes. <laughs> chanting and yeah. gurus and monks yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, I saw that in one of the documentaries where you talked about that you had really raised India, bringing her around to all these spiritual teachers. And I, I mm. think that's so cool. <laughs> I would love for that to have been the case. And, um, my mom, my mom's here. She's so sorry. Um, and I have this deep belief that everywhere we end up, no matter how hard it is, happens for a reason. Yeah. And we can get into that later. Yeah. But somehow, for whatever reason, you were pulled into something that seemed so good and so self-improving. So at exactly. the time. I mean, we were surrounded by people that looked really legitimate. I mean, well, they were. They are I mean, legitimate. Yeah, I mean, yeah. with recognizable Entrep- actors, yeah. entrepreneurs. I mean, even the presentation was given by um, Vicente, Vicente and Sarah Edmondson, and they were really enthusiastic about it too. I mean, it was kind of infectious, actually. Yeah. Right. No, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was exciting, and people are having these breakthroughs. And then Nancy, one of the people at the head of of the company, came in. The I CEO, saw for your yeah, first. She did for your first session, kind of. And so that probably felt exciting. 
And special. I mean, they they really pumped her up. At first, we did not have any, like, real, you know, pizzazz about Nancy because I didn't have a history with her. I was just like, oh, it's the lady from the TV. And (laughs) Well, honey, did you explain that they would make us sit in front of the TV to watch what they call modules, which were little classes taught by Nancy hate to say, super cheesy 1980 yeah. videos. <laughs> it's a really, so really bad <laughs> I, Yes, in a way, I get it. I feel like I would have been so bored. But obviously, <laughs> something captivated you and it was, and you were very young. And yeah. so it was the promise of something exciting to work on yourself. I also like to learn. So right. it was, I felt engaged and I, I'm dyslexic. So like my learning disability has always kind of been a struggle for me in traditional education. And this program the way that they gave their information was through video, was through audio, was through worksheets. It has a multitude of ways to kind of more or less indoctrinate you into their program. But to me, it was like, oh, I'm learning different. I'm Mm -hmm. learning without all the restrictions of regular school that I had felt growing up. So I I liked that in the beginning. No, I'm sure that was exciting. Then you started to make friends and that started to become your community. Yeah. So at that point, how long was it then, Catherine, you stayed involved for a period of time. How long was it until India branched off and kind of went further into the company? Six months. Well, I took classes as a student and I could see they started to aggressively try to recruit both of us to become coaches. And something was a little bit off about that because I understood self-help as a tool but not really as a lifestyle. And so I just started to distance myself. And I think first I was enthusiastic about the classes. Then by the end of year two, I was completely done. For, yeah. I can go into those reasons afterwards. But at the end of the first year, pretty quickly you became I mean, a coach. About six to eight months in, yeah. I, they asked me if I wanted to be a coach. And I was like, no. I just didn't care for that. I mean, that wasn't what I was looking for uh, out of executive success programs. I thought, oh, I'll take these skills and I'll go do a catering business or, you know, anything else that I was passionate about. But they were so insistent and so flattering to me about how, you know, the program is, you're such a natural at it. You're really good with the curriculum. You absorb it so quickly. And that felt really good. And I actually thought, oh, (laughs) <laughs> Maybe they think I'm smart, oh, you right. know, I, and I, and I was, I was in a vulnerable spot and I was really feeling like loved and cared for by these people. And so I, I said, yes, and I did become a coach and that's when our paths really diverged. really changed. Mm-hmm. And but I started to learn a lot about their recruiting strategies mm-hmm. and their coaching curriculum, which is very intense. I do want to add something mm-hmm. because I remember them trying to recruit me as a coach. Yeah. And they would say, the work only really starts when you become a coach. So anybody that was just a student was seen as sort of a dilettante. Yeah. But then what they also said is the minute you become a coach, you have to be open to feedback. And feedback is the beginning of the breaking down process into indoctrination. And they so they built you up and sucked you in. Then they start to break you down the minute. Basically, you give them permission to give you feedback. Which is more or less abuse yeah, masked exactly. as feedback mm-hmm. because they, there's no boundaries to it. They could tell you anything that they feel or project onto you. And because you're in a position of, you know, receiving and they're the authority figure, I really took a lot of that to heart, yeah. especially their criticisms of me, all, yeah. my mother, of the weaknesses that they perceived in me. And I thought, well, maybe this is because I'm not objective enough and I need somebody to tell me what's wrong with me so I can fix it. Mm -hmm. And I felt like really motivated, I guess, if you will, or just kind of desperate for that at the time. Well, they started to feed you with the fact that you're broken and they can fix it. And I think that to me is a big red flag. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Anybody who tells you that they have the solution and that there's something wrong with you, run. Yeah, that's a huge, huge red flag. And that's such a good tip looking back now. Mm-hmm. Because I remember seeing in Seduced, your documentary, that they would try to tear you two apart yeah. in a way, like yeah. make fun of 
how close you were. Wearing we the same dressed outfit. The same. Yeah, exactly. Or we like the same. I know. But even though I that know. is like the <laughs> no, best no, no, way no. to Thank be. You. <laughs> but but that, yes. and I felt so much shame yeah, about that at right. the time because I was trying so hard to individuate and like <laughs> right. be my own human. And I thought, mm, maybe this is, maybe they're right. Maybe I'm like too yes. much like my mom and I need to separate <laughs> myself. But that just fed in to exactly what they wanted. Right, right. Well, well should I'm we describe what happened on day one of the first pro- the first class? Yeah. We sat together because we wanted, I wanted to of share course. the experience with her. A coach came up and took her by the shoulders and said, she's not going to feel comfortable sharing in front of her mom. So I thought, well, I will, you know, I will trust that I want what's best for her and I'll give up the bonding experience that I had, you know, kind of wished for and do what's best for her. But that was the beginning of creating this wedge between us, separating and isolating loved ones. And it was strategic. Right. It wasn't in her best interest. It served the group. Because oh, they you. gave enough of a logical yes. explanation for right. you to accept it. Yeah. And yeah. So that, of course, they're, they're at the so time, slippery, yeah. you know? Yeah. I'm sure it made so much sense at the time. Yeah. So. I thought, oh, yes, my mom is a very powerful presence. <laughs> right. I might be intimidated in a group. Maybe I do want some space. Maybe this <laughs> is right for me. And I, and I believed that. And um, that was the beginning of that predatory alienation or isolation, yeah. which we did not no, was a, even a thing right. at the time. Well, it sounds like they preyed on the fact that they knew that you're a well-known actress, mm-hmm. Catherine. And so they mm-hmm. felt like they knew something about you guys, maybe, that they could drive that wedge between you. They, they did it with everybody. They, yeah, they, they, with everybody. Every family yeah. that that has been involved with Nexium, unless the family members towed the line and served the company, right. they severed their relationship. Because you had to so choose strange. to prioritize ESP or Nexium right, yeah, right. over any other value. Yeah. And that was considered virtuous. Yeah. And I mean, it's a it's an extreme version, but I think a lot of people do that. In, in relationships, you give yourself away, you forget about your friends and your family, and then you're completely absorbed by something right. that is ultimately toxic. Yeah, and it becomes your life. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, is that they taught her that any emotional attachment outside of the group was character weakness. So they made her feel ashamed of any loyalty to her family or anybody outside. That is, mm-hmm. that is so manipulative. I know. And so not okay with your emotions. No, and it, but it is a definite red flag that right. I hope is clear in the docuseries to to look for and just to be vigilant about in our own lives. Yes. Yeah. I was telling your mom that I never imagined that this unbreakable bond between mother and child could be broken. And it was a rude awakening for me to find out that that was, that they did break it and we had to fight to get it back. Yeah. And we're still in, we we still have hiccups and things that we want to work on. And we're just more aware of what it is. Like for a while, I couldn't distinguish like what was the cult program versus what were my thoughts. And so that's taken several years yeah. to kind of process through. That's so scary. I know. Like, you don't, really you don't think, hypnotized you. You don't think you can be hijacked, like that you could have your yeah. mind or your emotions hijacked. Mm-hmm. But that is really what happens. And that's what I see that's how I see the people that are still loyal. I, I feel them hijacked. I can't believe there are people who are still loyal, but we'll have to get into that. I know. <laughs> so you got deeper and deeper into the cult. We can call it a cult. Mm-hmm. Yep. And tell us what that was like. So you went from being a student to being a coach. coach. Mm-hmm. But a shadow coach. So basically, you're a, men- you're a mentee and you're mentoring and you aren't paid until you read a certain level of proficiency in the company. And for this company, it was called Proctor. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And that meant you were like a teacher. And those people were compensated. Um, Kind of. But it was minimal. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of sweat and blood that you put into this company without really getting anything. I mean, I didn't make any money the whole time I was there. you're paying a lot of money. And I'm paying a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that I'm advancing in my life, but really my life was shrinking. Yeah. And I was getting more involved in the group and less involved with the things that I actually cared about. Mm -hmm. Another red flag. Well, the other red flag is the kind of the consuming of all your time and resources that it was mandatory as a coach for her to keep taking classes over and And over again. And be constantly enrolled. 
Yeah. You actually would lose your status as a coach if you didn't continue to do the programs. That sounds so stressful yeah. and like yeah. so much, it was so a much lot. work. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So then we, we learn in these documentaries that you become involved with DOS. Yes. With... Alice and Mac. And so for everybody listening who doesn't know what that is, start, tell us kind of what that was about. Well, DOS was created as far as I know in 2015. And I was recruited soon after that, actually, uh, by Alice and Mac. And the way that they pitched it was as if it was a secret sorority that was for female empowerment and growth and that it was going to be one-on-one coaching And it was going to push you past the places that you couldn't push yourself and hold you accountable for the things that maybe you were afraid of. And I was once again feeling very lost and aimless even within Nexium because I wasn't growing. What I didn't know was I was being held there Mm -hmm. on purpose. So I was feeling really sad and kind of just looking for some guidance. And Alice and Mac approached me and we, we didn't have a relationship before that. We didn't really even know each other. And she approached me during a coach summit and she started to just kind of ask me questions like, what are you afraid of? What do you think is stopping you from your growth? All pretty typical questions within self-help and specifically Nexium. So I just kind of opened up to her mm-hmm. and I kept telling her that I just felt stuck by my fears, that I wish that I would push past them so that I could actually grow. And I felt like I had one foot in and one foot out and everything that I was telling her, she just gave it back to me and said, well, I have the answer for that. But it seems so real and it seems so genuine at the time. Like she actually wanted to help me and that she cared. Right. And she was a superior to me in, in the group and she was excelling. And so I thought, oh God, well, if she can do it, maybe maybe she's on to something. So it started from there. And then she, then she asked me for collateral, which is blackmail, and told me that it was for us to keep this secret so that nothing would get out. And I thought, no way. I, I mean, you're, we're cool. I can keep a secret. Like, just tell me what this is about. And she just kept holding it out like this secret treasure that I was finally going to be able to learn about until I gave her a substantial amount of blackmail that already compromised me too much to say no. And so that was the first trap when it came to DOS. And, you know, I look at it really differently now. I mean, I feel sad about the time that I spent there, but I also think that, like you said, I do think that things happen for a reason. I do think that you go through certain things in your life and you either learn from them or you get taken down, you know? And I I consider DOS and my experiences in Nexium very much like that. Like something that ultimately didn't break me, but it was very tough. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I see that for you as well. I see it as a beautiful a gift ultimately and I'm sure it, it still probably doesn't quite feel that way because it was so tough and so tough on your family and your yeah, relationships so tough on my family but in the end you're already helping so many people and you are going to continue to help so many people and you. the path that you're on from here I can't wait to see all <laughs> that you do it's I mean you've learned lessons that people in this lifetime many people will never have to learn and, and have to go through so Yeah. And I I feel like my mom and I were really on parallel paths and like I was on the inside and she was on the outside. And we've talked a lot about this since coming out of the group and kind of sharing our experiences. While I was reading her book, I saw so many moments where I was feeling exactly the same way. But wow. we couldn't at the same time. communicate at the right. same time because we were speaking different languages. And I just remember thinking that her book was going to destroy me and it actually did the opposite. Ooh, it showed so me it showed me so much of what I ha- had been concealed from me for right. so long. 
Okay, just a brief interruption from this incredible conversation to talk about Array, my favorite bloating supplement and probably my favorite product on the market right now. It was founded by a TBB reader, Sifat, and it is a 100% natural and filler-free alchemy capsule that is full of just very minimal natural ingredients that help with bloat. So a couple nights ago, I was telling Jonathan, wait, this is so funny. For the first time in my life, I'm not like bloated, looking eight months pregnant. I'm not burping all the time. I'm not having terrible indigestion late at night. And he was like, yeah, that's because you have your bloating capsules from Array. And this is a true story. So it has really changed my life in ways that I have noticed and then ways that I kind of just notice later on when I'm feeling the effects over time. So they just have a few potent ingredients in Array, which is ginger root, lemon balm, dandelion root, peppermint, slippery elm, and bromelain. It gives you immediate relief and it's 100% natural. It is vegan, gluten-free, nut-free, cruelty-free, kosher, filler-free, and non-GMO. And they also have calm capsules. But I have a feeling, although a lot of us need calm, that a lot of people here are looking to combat bloat because I just know TBB community so well. And this really works. So whether you're eating a vegan pizza or whether you're just having your simple smoothie for breakfast, we all just need a little bit of help. It also helps to prevent gas, which I have definitely noticed, and helps to to prevent heartburn as well. So the exciting thing is you can use the code BLONDE, B-L-O-N-D-E at Array.com to get free shipping in the US and Canada. And I know you're going to love. Tag me on Instagram if you try them. Now let's get back into this episode with Catherine in India. So Catherine, when you learned about DOS, I'm sure this was a terrifying experience. And is that when you really started to work you know, kind of full time on trying to get India out? So now that we're not in the middle of an investigation, I can be a bit more open about what was going on because one of the things the cult did, thanks to Sarah and Clara Bronfman's hundreds of millions of dollars they put into suing people, is they would accuse people of extortion. So Mm -hmm. we, we couldn't kind of show this united front that was happening behind the scenes. And Bonnie... Um, I had really distanced myself from anyone in the group because I think I was really angry that they had sucked my my daughter in so deeply. But there was a moment through a go-between that Bonnie reached out and she was really scared to tell me that she had actually heard about DOS. And she dared reach out to me and she told me, you need to save India. And I didn't know what she was talking about because, and I said to Bonnie, I respect my daughter. I don't like what she's doing, but I really believe that she will wake up of her own accord yeah, but in her knew. own time. And she's like, I don't think so. She went in too young. And this is like her life is at stake. I'm paraphrasing, but basically, and we met. And she told me about the sleep deprivation and that she was on a starvation diet. And she told me about the fact that there was a slave master subgroup secret society within Nexium, and that Keith was the grandmaster and there was probably sex trafficking. No, she didn't say sex trafficking. We figured that out altogether. Anyway, I didn't know. There was, it was such a giant download yeah. that I knew she had no reason to make this up. And she, I knew that she was taking a huge risk at the time because her husband was still in the group, in the cult. And so she was risking her marriage. She was yeah. risking everything. This had been, I don't know how many years of her life. And I said, okay, so what do I do? And she gave me a laundry list of films that I had to watch about books. cults and books. And she connected me with the woman she was working with. And I, within 24 hours, went and met with this doctor. Ra- no, she's not a doctor. Rachel Bernstein, who is a cult expert. And I started reading every single book on that list. And then we learned about the branding. She and is I, a doctor. She's a licensed therapist. Yeah, but she's not a doctor. Oh, she's not. Okay. Um, And we start, then Bonnie was working to get Mark out. And then we slowly, and (laughs) we helped each other build a strategy. And I, it was for me 24 seven, whether it was going out, reaching out uh, to the FBI, a friend of mine who owns rehabs to see whether or not, you know, how to get her out, how to do an intervention. I got her back to LA. I confronted her. 
It was a disaster. <laughs> yeah, it did not go well. <laughs> I confronted her with everything, actually. Really, this was in May of 2017. 17. And then uh, when I failed and she got back on a plane to go back to Albany to participate in a branding ceremony, I lost it. And I must have called 50 people. I had no idea what I was going to do. It was do. actually only because of my mom's response that that got can't. I mean... All of it was canceled as far as I, <laughs> as far as I know. I mean, they could have been branding other women that I wasn't aware of, but I just like owe so much to my mom's interruption of that yeah, because, because you were calling all the she news was outlets. Calling it out. Well, mm-hmm. before that, well, yeah. my friend who is a, like he owns rehabs, basically, I introduced him to Mark and Bonnie and he said, you need, first of all, he said, this is a criminal organization when Bonnie, Bonnie and Mark's eyes were like, it was like right. a wake-up call because, Gosh, because he could yeah. see it. He could yeah. see it. And he said, there's sex trafficking going on. Like immediately he saw it. And then he told us all, disrupt, disrupt, disrupt. Yeah. And we took it very seriously. And we didn't <laughs> stop. We were a nightmare for this yeah, group. Yeah, and I was <laughs> the Thank problem God. child within the group who had the mother oh, right. trying was to a, destroy oh, the I'm group. Sure. And now I'm being used as a pawn against my mother telling me she's a psychopath, <laughs> telling me but I, I should sue her. Oh, no. oh, yeah, they wanted to, they, they tried did. tried to sue me. Oh, they tried God. to tell me to get a restraining order against her. I was like, well, she's not trying to attack me, so I'm and not going to get a restraining order. On me. And to get dirt to yeah. discredit her. So even Nancy Horrible. Salzman had me writing statements to discredit my mother. I mean, it was such an awfully and Claire confusing Rothman. time of, I'm you know, speechless. sinking back into the group because I was afraid and I thought that these were the people that I could trust and they were telling me that anybody else was an enemy or a danger. And um, then... I was at a loss because I'd reached out to the government. No, I'd, yeah, I'd reached out to the FBI and the local Albany police, police. And I said, you have to stop this. This is not consensual. These women are being coerced. They're being branded and coerced. And they would not listen. And at that point, I'm like, I have no choice but to go to the media. I have no choice but to expose this whole group and stop them from being able to do business as usual. And that was a really painful decision because I knew she might never, ever talk to me again. And that was the reality for about a year. Mm -hmm. And the first outlet to kind of expose this was the New York Times. And I didn't stop doing media until I got a call from my lawyer saying that the government had reached out and said, you don't have to fight on your own anymore. We're taking this very seriously and we're moving in aggressively. And I just, I remember being in the lobby of the building and just in New York and just like crying. Oh my God. You you and Bonnie and Mark and Sarah were all just like waiting for this article to come out. We were waiting. I mean, right on the heels of the Me Too movement. In the vow, in watching the documentary, just like feeling your frustration. I mean, oh, I'm sure. (laughs) Because waiting for something like that and they were like, we can't promise you anything. I was like, come on. It was Publish crazy. It. it was crazy. So and intense. the way the vow, if you're interested, the way the vow came about is that I was introduced to Jahan, who is, I think, the producer, the director of the vow. And she came and just interviewed me on camera just in the beginning of like June of 2017. And then they never left, ever. And, and it became this group of people that were trying to find ways to expose crimes yes. and gather evidence. And ultimately, I was the one who took this dossier that we all helped put together and take it to the government. And it, they, you know, they really helped me get through that period of time. Yeah. And they were with me for a year, but the, India considered me such an enemy and them such enemies that, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit because there was a moment when she was ready to reach out to me, but I knew that she didn't trust me and she didn't trust them. And if I, and I had didn't cameras, want cameras around, <laughs> no, and you did not want me to associate with anybody. I mean, it was hard enough for her to even talk to me alone. Yeah. So I had to make the painful decision of like cutting ties with everybody. And because my priority was always my daughter. Of course, of course. I mean, that's why you were involved to exactly. begin with. Just so many difficult decisions one yeah. after the other. And now, I mean, I see her decisions so differently than I than I did before, obviously. I mean, everything came from love and that's just such a, like, such a thing. I can't even talk about it. It's like, I, I am so, I'm just so 
grateful. It's hard for me to even explain. I know. Well, you have a wonderful mother <laughs> and, and the bond is so beautiful. And I feel there's, it. There's many people who are still in that, yeah. that don't have their families and I don't know. have support and don't have, like my mom was created a foundation <laughs> before I was even out to give That's people incredible. therapy and resources to rebuild their lives before I was even communicating with her. And I mean, that's that's a gift that I want to continue to give to other people. And we're, we're working together on that foundation now to bring resources to the people that need them. And I just feel so grateful that I had a loving family to go back to because many people leave cults. They have no nothing. career, right. no money, no families because they've cut them all out. Exactly. It's hard. It's hard to rebuild. And there's very few therapists that are experts in cult exit recovery because there's no money in it. Because they've drained everybody's resources. Oh, so they come out and so they're destitute. Sense. That makes so much sense. And what's interesting about Nexium, it seems, is that all of you worked for Nexium. So that's mm. your income. And Right. And if you're that, not making anything, then you're right. just burning up fumes. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> or doing exchanges. And a lot of yeah. the time people would get in debt and they would do exchanges for their work, like their time, which was their work, but it wasn't compensated. It was like you were paying off your debt because you had taken courses. So mm -hmm. you really were financially a slave, you know, right? exploited mm -hmm. and yeah. enslaved by the company. I mean, it wasn't, I mean, DOS took it to another level, but even as a coach or a student, there was still coercion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So meanwhile, you are deep in DOS. You're getting branded. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that experience. Oh, I mean, I think sometimes people assume that the branding just like, happened right away. But we're talking about five years of grooming up to the point mm -hmm. where anyone accepts the branding. And it really wasn't accepting the branding because there was no option to say no. We were coerced into being right. branded. We had blackmail, enormous amount of blackmail being held over us. I even remember saying like, do we have to do this? Mm -hmm. And it was like, yes. And so there was even still a little piece of me that was trying to fight against it that knew that I didn't want this, but the option to say no was not, not there for me or the other women. So um, the branding, ugh. I mean, at the time we were being told that it was for our own empowerment and, and bonding and that we were bonding through pain and through something tough, like we were pledging to be in this sorority. Mm -hmm. And for a little while, I actually kind of, felt proud of that. Like I had done something tough with women that I loved and cared about and not Allison, but the right. other women in my pod because I, I created friendships and relationships with them. I mean, when they're the only people that you can really talk to, you do get close. And we were trying to make, make it as good as we could, even though we were all having a very difficult time. We were being told to look happy, to behave well, to be good, to perform like Allison and Keith wanted, irrespective of what we were really feeling. So the branding was just an extension of that. It was just one more lie where we had to convince ourselves that it was something else. We were told that it was a symbol of the elements. We were never told it was Keith Raniere's right. initials. So when did you realize it was Keith's initials? Well, I was I the mean, first one who told her. Yeah, oh, in 2017, God. but I couldn't believe it. Yeah, when it. I was doing this wretched confrontation, I'm like, do you know what you're branded with? And she's like, well, I'm not sure. I think it's the symbol of the elements. I'm like, you don't even know what you're branded with? I'm like, no, it's Keith Raniere's initials. But it didn't. It took you a year and a half yeah. to really believe that. It wasn't oh until I found the, the tapes yeah. and listened to Keith in his own words say that, I mean, say that the brand was his monogram, K-A-R. And when I heard that, oh my God, yeah. I just like my mouth dropped to the floor and I ran to my mom because I had just moved back from New York to uh, Los Angeles and we were living together. And I said, you will not believe what I just found on these tapes. And I had no idea. I mean, I hadn't even opened the flash drives until I moved back because they were just shoved in a duffel right. bag. But that for some reason, hearing him say it in his own words really kind of irrefutable sunk in. Proof. And I just thought, I can never go back to thinking the way that I thought. That must have been a shock wave it was. to you. It mm -hmm. was. And I was like, mom, 
You have to hear I this. I need you to hear this and I need the number of the FBI because I think they might want this. Oh my and God. That was the beginning of me being a cooperating witness for nine months. Mm-hmm. And I had been talking, obviously I was in touch with the government and they were warning me you know, every step of the way and they would ask what address, where she was living. Like I was in constant touch with various members of the government just to keep tabs we're on all her. all angels. <laughs> oh my God. The most incredible yeah. team. That's I mean, incredible. I spent a lot of time with them, if yeah. you can imagine. I'm sure. Many mornings, many pastries. <laughs> and <laughs> they're trying to fatten her up. <laughs> they're trying to fatten her <laughs> up. Oh, sure. Oh my God. You were not even allowed to eat for all no, this time. No, they're like, what do you, what do you like? I'm like, anything. <laughs> you were probably so excited to be able to. And just, just be... Be more free. Be more free. But it was not easy. And it was very hard because I had not had... Um, I had not spoken about these things in a linear way. And when you're working with the government, for instance, they need every detail and they need it all chronologically and with no holes. And I, so you have to repeat and repeat Mm -hmm. and repeat this information. And this is seven years of my life. So as I'm doing this, I'm having floods of Of memories memories come up from things that I had never even thought about. And I would call my mom and I'll be like, you won't believe this. I just remembered yeah. this. And she would like, write this down, write this down. And once the, like the and fountain, oh, the guys are unleashed. It was, it was weird like, and it was oh scary God. because yeah. I was having all of these memories that I was trying to reconcile with. And a lot of it was really painful and and really disturbing. But I think that's that's part of really going all in on something is like you really do see the good, the bad and the ugly. Right. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of it you had probably blacked out from your memory yes. and then it starts to come back. Totally. That's you're disassociation. Very strong, yeah. very strong for even committing to mm. going through that process to help the greater good in that way because you easily could have not, you know, I gone wanted that. to run away to the yeah. mountains and yeah. never talk about Nexium again. Oh, I'm I sure. don't think like, she could have easily not. No, yeah. but yeah. I was like, no, oh, yeah, laser no. focus. Exactly. Well, she had you. Exactly. Yeah, no, exactly. I had a mom that was like, <laughs> so, all right, of what do you yeah. need? <laughs> and you are already so deeply involved in, yeah. in that side of things, thankfully, because you yeah. guys have done so much good. So my question, because Allison really seems to have gotten you involved in, in DOS. Yeah. Do you feel that Allison is to be held accountable and in the same way as Keith? I mean, not the same. Keith is like Mm. evil to the next degree. Yeah, It's such a hard question because I just don't know what her mindset is now. And it's, it's like difficult for me to pass judgment on that. Thank God I don't have to. And that's in the hands of the court uh, and the judge to decide what, what consequences that she deserves. I just really do have some sympathy for her because I, I, I lived with her and I saw what Keith did to her and how he treated her and she's a broken human. And like, I think anybody can have sympathy for that. But she also did a lot of very cruel and criminal things to me and my friends. And there has to be justice there. Yeah, I agree. What do you think? Well, (laughs) I... (laughs) Mom's I a little less forgiving, but well, she <laughs> rightfully so. <laughs> she hurt my daughter. Yeah. And I know that she did not have my daughter's best interest at heart at all. No. And the truth is, oh God, this is so tough. It's like, I think it will depend on the degree of remorse that she shows. It really will, because you see somebody like Claire Bronfman, who's been under house arrest for two years, and even at her sentencing, she's like, I will not disavow this man. And you go, how is it possible that even after two years of being removed from his influence, that you can still be, the cult is in you. The indoctrination lives inside you. Your psyche and and your soul. Like your psyche and your soul. Yeah, it's like he has stolen their souls. So if at her sentencing, she shows no remorse, then... Perhaps, as the government says, she needs to go sit somewhere and contemplate to the degree that she can see that this man actually hasn't done her any good and, and to see how, what a danger she's become to others. So I don't, I don't feel vengeful no. or that it's my responsibility to pass judgment. I really do feel like I've, you let it go and you let the justice system do its job. And in this case, it's really renewed my faith in the justice system. When it works in this country, 
It is exceptional. Yeah. And this investigation has been exceptional and painstaking and years. And they, they will know what sentence she deserves. I really believe that. Yeah. Yeah. I have a lot I of agree. trust. That makes in sense. That. Absolutely. Whatever is right will be. Will be. I, and same applies to Keith. I mean, right. initially they were going to give him, the judge had said 54 years. And then after all the victim impact statements and the fact that he then co- continued to call us liars yeah. and that he was innocent of these crimes, even at the very last minute he was saying this, the judge then gave him 120 Right. Good. Tell, tell what happened with his lawyer. Oh my God. All right. So I, I mean, I'm sitting there watching, you know, kind of really tense, waiting for the calculations, so trying hard. to understand all the legal jargon, which is like really difficult. And Keith's lawyer gets up for, you know, to say his piece and then wait for his client to speak because that's just how it goes. And he goes, well, if my client would just show some, you know, remorse and and admit to the things that... And he keeps looking over at him like, come on, man, like giving him the elbow to the side. Right. And Keith wouldn't, would not, <laughs> wouldn't absurd. budge. He said he had the nerve to say that he was sorry for our pain now and that we've just decided that we felt betrayed. I'm like, excuse no. me? Oh just decided? <laughs> no, this is not a just decided thing. I mean, like this is, it was just mind blowing. I'm like, okay, clearly you have zero empathy. This is the right place for you. Absolutely. And Did, <laughs> didn't he also say I'm responsible? Yeah. He but, said, please go easy because- on my other co-defendants because they are also innocent <laughs> of these crimes and I will take the burden. I'm like, what's this martyr shit? Like, right, exactly. where, where are you now? The martyr? Like, <laughs> exactly. no, no, you and can't play that directing game. the court as to who should be yeah. sentenced. How? Right. <laughs> no, you don't have the power so, anymore. The grandiosity. No, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Oh my God. It was absurd. I mean, I mean every, we were all wearing masks mm-hmm. because it's COVID. Right. And everybody's eyes were just like enormous. Like, is this really happening? I mean, it must have just been <laughs> insane to watch. It was. It also must have been so gratifying to watch. Because so validating. This has been a long time coming. So deserving. My mind is blown. <laughs> and I'm, I think it is just so impressive that you showed up yeah. and gave your victim impact statement because I'm sure that was not easy. It was not easy. And there was a lot of excuses to not go. Right. Well, like, it's COVID. COVID like, like you're it's still New York, healing. I'm yeah, still exactly. Healing. I could have sent a video. But I mean, and the people that sent videos actually were very compelling and strong. Yeah. I mean, everyone's statement was so powerful and just hearing their truth was heart-wrenching. I mean, I was using my mask to just conceal my tears. Mm -hmm. And my friend, my really good friend, actually spoke before me and she gave me so much strength. (laughs) She She just stood up there and she was so strong. And then when I actually was able to go up there, I felt like, okay, you got this, India. I was coaching myself through. I was like, eight minutes. Anybody can do anything for eight minutes. Just close up the chapter. Just get it all out. It's true. Get it all out of your system. I just wanted all of the poison out of me. And I just looked him in the eye and I said it to his face. And then when I went to sit on the, sit down, I just felt really calm. And it was weird. I like didn't know that that was going to happen. And I turned to my friend and we were just like trying not to gesture because you're not allowed. Uh (laughs) And we're like, Good job. Good job. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it must have been so cathartic. It and was. Thank God. Yes, definitely no. took a lot out yeah. of me. Oh, I, I mean, mean I was exhausting, depressing, I, painful, hard. Yeah, yeah. A lot of panic attacks. Very triggering. Very right. triggering. Oh, God. But no, also so worth hard. it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Worth it. And now he's behind bars forever. Yes. <laughs> Multiple lifetimes. Yes. Sorry. Thank Not goodness. sorry. Yes. And so tell us on like <laughs> such a brighter, know, like, <laughs> not sorry at all. No. On such a brighter note, I want to hear like how wonderful it was to be reunited. Oh. Oh my I God. Mean, Wait, can I tell about layers? The fir- which, no, which part? No, not the bad. <laughs> so, the good parts. <laughs> and the, all the parts. It's, yes. so, it's so funny because I'm like Rain Man with numbers. Like, I, I remember that day and that day because there was, uh-huh. there was so few opportunities to see her because they kept her on such a short leash. Right. I'd ask permission to even go see my family. Yeah. Oh my God, because of the slave and master yes. thing, yes. which we haven't even discussed. I know. But I mean, hor- slave so, and talk master. Forever. So this is July 2018 and Allison oh, yeah. had been arrested in April and I was in New York and um, 
India had already been speaking to the deprogrammer because I had just given her the number. For hours, For every hours, day. For hours, like every day. Every day. On, yeah, thank God. And we decided that the chief programmer, whose name is Diane Benz Cotto, she deserves actually Love a name. Angel, yeah. angel, angel woman, Love her. Waiting in the wings till the moment, you know, was yes. ready. And we, went, I, we flew to New York and we met in a hotel room and both, I didn't know this, I was pacing nervously in the hotel room going, I cannot believe that I'm having anxiety over seeing my own daughter. And she was doing the, was same, doing the same thing. thing. Like, I was I'm so, so nervous. Oh I'm so God. nervous. It's the weirdest it thing. It's the weirdest thing. So many parallels. And then we're sitting there with Diane interpreting because we're both speaking different languages. Literally. And my phone goes nuts. And I'm like, holy shit, Claire Brompton just got arrested and dragged <gasps> into, into court. And Nancy Salzman and Lauren Salzman and this woman called Kathy Russell. And I'm just sitting there for the first time. It was like... Getting her before yeah. it could have been her. <laughs> oh my like, god! Seriously, oh my, yeah, it was insane. Oh my god! That yeah, is it was a lot wild. of adrenaline, yeah. and then from that mediation, which was really our first contact real conversation, in over a year. It, it was so hard. But I mean, we we went directly to a lawyer. I took her straight to a lawyer who read her the, whole, the criminal complete. Yeah, explained everything oh, yeah. to me because I you know, it's enormous and I wasn't reading it because I was told <laughs> don't read it. It doesn't, it's, it's fake. And I was like, wait, this is a criminal, com- what? It's fake? Huh? Uh? And then my mom's she, like, no, this is what <laughs> it is. And the woman went step by step. Line by line. Read it to me, yeah. everything. And she explained to me the, mul- I mean, the multiple ways that I was used. But one, for instance, that I hadn't occurred to me was that I was used as a lure. Yeah. Because Alice and Mac you know, although very charismatic is not necessarily the easiest personality to recruit people. And so Keith had instructed her to make me live with her so that I could entice other women because I'm more gentle and I'm more, you know, relatable. Yeah. And I didn't know that. I didn't know any of that. And so I was being used in that way innocently telling people how good this thing is and how wonderful I thought it was. Well, I mean, it's literally a funnel. I mean, into hell. Keith's perversion. It's a funnel I mean, into hell. That is one of the things that I had to really learn to forgive myself for because I had to realize that I did not do that from a place of malice. No, I know that about myself. And, but it's really hard because you question yourself when you make decisions like that. Like, who am I? What kind of person am I? I will say this, watching people like Mark and Bonnie and my daughter go through the process of leave it affecting, the, it's almost as if it, this is accurate. So when they break you down in a cult, then they build you up in their own image. They're creating a new person, a new personality. Like a diff, She was a different person. In Keith's image. In, yeah, in the image, exactly. I know. So when you leave, that has to shatter that persona and it's almost it's a it's an existential crisis that feels like a death, and people go yeah. through. It's a very dangerous transition. People feel suicidal. I did. Very, she many did times. for months and months and months. I would get these calls. I'm losing my mind. I want to hurt. I thought I, I was, was really scary. I it's thought, really hard. I thought that I was not going. I was never going to be able to feel again. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was really only feeling like terror and fight or flight at that point. I mean, not only was I working with the FBI and going back from, um, I was living in Colorado at the time with my now fiance and we, I was going back to New York every two weeks doing this. And then I would come home and I would be alone and I wasn't allowed to talk to anybody because yeah, you're under true. strict instructions. Yeah. So I felt like siloed, mm-hmm. but siloed and crazy. <laughs> so I would go in the car and just beat on my steering wheel and scream and just go like, I'm losing my mind. And I would curl up in a ball at night and just like cry. And I didn't know what was going on. I mean, it was so messy and so scary and obviously not allowed to talk to anybody about it. (laughs) So hard. I know. That is so hard and such a healthy reaction that you were feeling these things and letting it all out. And it was scary because I had been so repressed for so long from feeling emotions like that because you were told that any erratic emotions were like throwing a fit or a tantrum. But You're that punished was part for of the that. misogyny. And that was part right. of the misogyny yeah, the whole, of Keith. Yeah, the, exactly. To punish yeah. women for their feelings. Yeah. Right. And well, because so, it was all those, like all that <sighs> indoctrination of like, if you can only be a victim, if you let yourself be a yes. victim. All I mean, the twisted, perverted so feminism. Yeah. I haven't even mentioned that I've yeah. been like obsessed with 
cult psychology for like oh, no 15 years. I don't know why, <laughs> but I have been. And so like every cult that exists pretty much, I've seen all the documentaries. I've read all Me the too books. now. I'm sure you have. <laughs> and so I get it. Yeah. And I also get being such a spiritual person myself, as I was saying to you guys in the kitchen, I get how it happens because yeah. I was always seeking something deeper, always seeking a guru, a teacher, a healer, and just always feeling like there is this deeper meaning to life, which there is, and it's so there beautiful. Is. And there are wonderful teachers out there. Yeah. And then there are also just horribly manipulative. I think when people become like a guru, they just yeah. get on this power trip and it's almost impossible to find one who hasn't right. been. I know. Like I agree. Ego. I think what people that, that go for those types of positions of power yeah, are I, typically yeah. narcissists. True. Yeah. True. So that is definitely one thing to look for. And But they're very good at hiding their narcissism and, you know, using very fluffy, cushy terms like personal, you know, personal responsibility right. and empowerment and pushing against your fears. I mean, all of those things can be so easily butchered. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the other thing that's interesting huh. is that he touted himself as sort of this evolved human being because he was non-reactive. Oh, and a celibate, and a well, that's the other yeah. also uh, bullshit. Talk about liar. all the deceptions. Yeah. Such a liar. But the fact is, it's not because he was a superior human being that he wasn't reactive. He just didn't have emotion. So everyone aspired to Sociopath. be like Keith, the master. But actually, it's because he was right a, a, a void. Well, and didn't he lie about his IQ and everything? Like being such a <laughs> yes. smart person. Yes. And when I read the government's <laughs> com like their initial documents, Who's they made a point to go find his real. Um, GPA, GPA right. from the <laughs> he's very low. Two point two six. Yes, he was on the genius. Yeah. yeah, this is Mr. Frosty. Hi, Mr. Oh my God, Frost. Frost. We love cats. Me too. I have two at home. I, They're I, the best. I rescued them. Well, first. I fostered them. Mm -hmm. Then they did kitten magic on me and now I own them. <laughs> Are and they're they so healing? So healing. I call them my therapy cats. I know. They're called rice and beans. That is so and cute. <laughs> they're brother and sister and I can't wait to go home to them because I've been working with my mom here at her home mm -hmm. and they're in the marina. So. Yeah. No, cats are literally so healing. My cat Hudson, he's my healer. He's my mm. therapy. He's so <laughs> wise. We have past lives together. We can go oh, on and on. I believe mm -hmm. it. I believe he's, it. He's my everything. And he, that also came about in a super serendipitous way. So I'm happy that you have the animal therapy oh, yeah, love around so you. It is a huge component of healing. And like one of the creepy things about actually being inside of the group is actually animals were a competition to Keith. And he would permit you to have an animal or not. And actually, sadly, animals disappeared. Oh my and gosh. I mean, my friends and I, my friends who have left, who I'm still in contact with now, I mean, some of my best friends I made through yeah. this transition in my life. Good. And they're like, you know, I really strongly believe that Keith actually killed them. Oh, yeah. I and heard that. It's what true. the yes. heck? Yeah. Not to mention um, another documentary I saw called The Lost Women of Nexium. Have you guys oh, seen that? Oh, yes. Well, I know Frank Parlato quite right, well. Right, right. So looking into that and those four potential mm -hmm. murders. Like, do you think he was poisoning those women who lived with him? I wouldn't put it past him. That is the scariest thing. I really ever. wouldn't. I mean, it's all scary. It's all, but that just takes it to a whole other level. I mean, the women living with him were basically his wives or whatever. Mm -hmm. If he had poisoned them and that's why they were all getting cancer. So many of them had well, cancer, to be honest, Jordan. It's crazy. Jordan, the poisoning was happening. But it was him. happening by right. liquid. No, you're so or by, right. right. I just got Spiritually, yes, psychically, yes. sexually, everything. It was like a rape, yes, a poison. It was. He was so toxic. Was. And so many women in the inner circle developed cancer and died. Yeah, yeah because it's poison it's the level one of way poison or the other. And self-hatred that he was filling people it with. It's just, it's, you, it's unsustainable. It really absolutely. is. Absolutely. No, I see that. It's the energetic poison. Like we're talking about those know. energy dis-ease, all of that. That's what happens. I believe it. And I mean, I'm still struggling with that even to this day. I still have health issues that yeah. I'm working on and I'm trying to fix and anxiety and panic attacks mm -hmm. and those things that trigger you that you can't really anticipate. But now I have a better view of what's happening. Like before exactly. I felt like it was happening to yeah. me and now I'm like, okay, it's happening. We got this. You're in control. I'm in control. I can work through this. I go to my mom. I'm like, it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> like, Let's good. look at the triggers. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. 
I get it. I have not been in your situation even but remotely, you but I get panic attacks all the time. It's so scary. Yeah. And it's all part of being a sensitive human, human. in yeah. the world. And one more brief interruption to talk about our final sponsor for today's episode, Nourish by Nature Made, the number one pharmacist recommended vitamin and supplement brand. Nourish offers a monthly subscription service that is both convenient and customizable to make sure that you are getting the proper vitamin intake. It is backed by 45 years of science and it removes the guesswork from you trying to figure out what supplements are right for you, which I love. Nourish packages are perfect personalized and delivered right to your door. Their convenient subscription service can be adjusted, paused, or canceled at any time. Packs are customized to your needs and they're very affordable, which we love. On average, it costs less than $2 a day to get your Nourish Vitamin intake. So I know a lot of us are a little worried about supplements being very pricey and I know that we will all appreciate the benefits of Nourish for this reason. So you can visit Nourish.com to take a five-minute assessment and to receive a supplement recommendation tailored specifically to you. So enjoy. Tag me on Instagram as always if you try and back to the this episode with Catherine in India. So on a spiritual level, because I know we can all go there. Yeah. What are some of the modalities that have been helping you both heal? Prayer. A lot of prayer. <laughs> and I mean, connecting to something greater than myself. I mean, whatever you want to call it, the universe, mm-hmm. God, like you said, I mean, that I feel similarly to that. It's 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 been so helpful for me in times where I just need guidance. <laughs> and, Absolutely. I mean, I would say this whole lot. process has been developing a relationship with faith and living a life of faith because you can choose either faith or fear. There's really, those are the two options so true. and either you're in service to, of fear. And so even like being um, vigilant with my thinking has been very much part of my recovery. And, you know, you may have to do it because you were programmed, but we're all programmed culturally in a very fear-based, we're very fear-based. Right. And so it's I'm, as I'm going through a similar process as she is in terms of just being very vigilant with my, my thinking. Um, my feelings about myself, the way I, we speak to our, each other, how we think about things. I mean, it is a different level of awareness that I didn't realize that I would have to fight for. Because it's so easy to fall back to that default negative programming. I mean, I fight against it every day. Every yeah. day. Like I've, I I was talking to someone earlier and I thought, I feel very similarly to maybe how someone in an AA feels. Yeah. Where it's like forever this will be something that I will interface with. Obviously, it's very different now. But I do think I have to be vigilant because if I let it slip, I can go down and I can feel very depressed and I can, I can go there. I just, I don't want to anymore. I don't want to, you know, it's, it's a process and in healing is a lot of trial and error. And I've had to do a lot of things physically to rebuild my strength. Like I took up boxing, which I absolutely mm-hmm. That's love. That's so fun. Oh and my gosh. I mean, my I'm husband would love that. It. Yeah. Crazy for Where it. Where do you do it? I do it on my street, actually. Oh, I cool. found a, a boxing trainer right near where I live. Uh-huh. And sometimes I do it in a group and it just made me, it made me feel strong. It made me feel confident. It made me focus, but without letting my thoughts interfere and trusting my body. It was huge. And just knowing that we're together, like it's not a fight against each other, but we're a team. It is. Because for a long time, I just thought like my body was the enemy because it was causing all of this torment. No, your body is, it's not. Your body and your soul are one and you're so strong. And I can see how boxing would be so therapeutic. Oh yeah. Sometimes you just got to punch the shit out of something. Envision those awful people. (laughs) <laughs> my coach, my coach doesn't know anything about me or Nexium or anything like that, which is cool. That must be and nice. And so he, he just, you know, his name's Johnny. He's awesome. He's an Italian old guy from New York and uh-huh. just a really like good mentor for me in boxing. And he was like, "Wow, are, what are you imagine? Like, what are you imagining today?" I was like, "You don't want to know. <laughs> like, inside, you have no idea I'm what like, I've been through. Literally <laughs> punching Keith's balls over and over again, yes. just oh my for my God. own satisfaction." And he and I was like, are you sure you want to know? And I told him one day, he was like, okay, 
no, you can keep those to yourself, but yeah. good, good job. Good job. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, the depth there's, there. a, there's a recovery. I mean, for me living on a dre- I lived on adrenaline. Mm-hmm. I didn't sleep. And then there's only so much a 59 year old can take living on adrenaline and my nervous system just crashed. So for me, part of the healing was really looking at, uh, I had to put my health first. Mm-hmm. I put her first for so long and it was about, my life literally became about, okay, developing very like strict eating habits, uh, giving up a lot of things. I had to give up all processed sugar, all gluten, all grains, try with cheese, no eggs, no, like it's been a process. Cheese is hard. Of, I, I get it. It's so hard. It's, I've had to really focus on um, finding ways to heal my nervous yeah. system. And it's humbling, actually. Yeah. It really is. And I feel limited and restricted in, in certain ways as I'm figuring this out. But, uh, you know, I, I guess I, you know, it, I only fell apart after everything was safe. Right. I mean, I, I get that. Yeah. I've also you were dabbled. On adrenaline until yeah. the end. Until the end. And yeah. then it was like, oh my God, uh, I fell apart physically. Right. I also really dabbled hard. in the, in, in trying to fix my body and my health. And I mean, being on a starvation diet, not only screws up your metabolism, but it also destroys your hormones. And so mm-hmm. I have had, I'm I'm still in the process of healing my body in that right. way. And I, you know, I've dabbled in the no sugar, no gluten, no this, no that. But I, I try and I, I go in and out of that because my, my fiance is a chef. So we eat, every, <laughs> oh, yeah, we eat everything. And you're a great everything, cook. And I'm a foodie. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, f- I try to find the balance for myself of like, okay, how can I care for myself in it from a loving place, not a militant place, mm-hmm. but also be okay with just, you know, eating pizza and like, you know, having a little dessert here and there, but also calibrating like, okay, what's, what's good for me? Mm-hmm. What do I need? And and that is something that I'm still learning a lot about. Right. Yeah. Cause it's the mental and the physical healing yeah. and not being too strict with yourself, yeah. but also knowing. My mom is so good at, at doing that for me. Cause she reminds me all the time, like, what are you eating? Are you like, mm-hmm. I, did you feed yourself healthy? Are you we're, taking we're care medical of yourself? Medium girls here. Yes. We love, we love the celery juice, yes. the healing lifestyle. She does. It's a lifestyle. It is and a lifestyle. I can definitely relate in so many ways where uh, when I just kind of realized this health issue that I have is something that I'll balance for the rest of my life. And it is a daily management. Yeah. And just like you said, it kind of reminds me of someone recovering in AA. Yeah. It's like every morning, I wake up, I make the decision to treat myself so well Mm -hmm. physically and I don't drink alcohol and all these different things. Not because I don't want to, but just because (laughs) it doesn't work for me. And And you know that about yourself. Right, exactly. So it's it's the healing path we're on and it's a very spiritual path. And to get like super spiritual on you guys, I see so, because I can kind of see people's faces shape shift. That's something oh, cool. a little out there about me, but people <laughs> on the podcast know this. So it's not out there on the podcast. Cool, I love that. Um, <laughs> but you guys have like such beautiful, beautiful angels around you, you. and like such beautiful cosmic energy. You. Have you guys heard of the Pleiadians? Yes. And so the you guys are so, and the... You're so Pleiadian and so Octarian. And me <laughs> I too. have to learn about that now. <laughs> we, I have some books I can, when you're Thank through you. with all the rest of what no, you're no. doing, doing in Let life. Let me we'll send the, you the I need a break from <laughs> yeah. all of this you stuff. Need I, need, stuff. I need some fun and some Learn, happy. <laughs> learning about that stuff really changed my world because I am such a highly sensitive person. Mm. I see that in you guys. And yeah. obviously it is those of us who are highly sensitive, who trust people so easily and see the best, see the good in people. So just learning, like yeah. we're so tied to so many things out there, the cosmos. It's, it's true. I know. It's a, Big connected universe. It that's is, for sure. It is. I'm getting my mom on board with all of it too. You're so sweet. My mom well, is like, what is she ever talking about and doing? Oh. But, <laughs> I'm like that with my mom. I'm like, yeah, call my is. mom. Yeah. She's totally like, like that like, with her mom. You're going to pray today. And this is the prayer She's you're like, going to okay, say. Okay, okay, this is amazing. what I need you to say today. I'm like, your mom with is her. amazing. Your grandmother. <laughs> oh my God, so I love her. She's the best. In both of the documentaries. She's like, I thought Nancy was an idiot. The moment that I saw her, I'm like, me too. I agree. 
Because I don't know about you guys. I saw like darkness with, with Nancy. That was my instinct. Uh, and yeah. I write about this in my book. I was in the back of the class heckling, calling her, making fun of her with my friend calling Callum. Her gold calling sash. her gold sash. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I was but so my embarrassed. Were, <laughs> yeah, I was sure. so embarrassed because I was, she was so a big into student. it. Yeah. And I, I was, was like, in the back stop. of the room behaving like a 13 year old. Right. It was totally freaky Friday. It was yeah. But those were my, in- that was my gut. And it was right on. You and were. I just, no, she's not good. And her no. daughter, what the heck? We could go on about I know, that. We could talk forever. But I do want to ask you guys a couple of the rapid fires that I ask everybody who comes on. Sure. So whenever I have people on together, I ask them to describe each other in three words. Oh, oh precious, <laughs> light filled, and kindness incarnate. And my mom graceful, elegant, and powerful. Mm. Thank you. You guys are going to make me cry. (laughs) You guys are so special together. And you guys are going to do, you already are, but you're going to continue to do so many incredible things together for the world. And it's so exciting. Thank you. It's very powerful, this mother-daughter bond. It really is. It's like... It can make, it is sort of miracle making magic it is. source. Oh, it is. And for, I mean, we are so. For anyone out there who, I mean, has a fractured family or a fractured relationship with their mother or whatnot, I mean, it's totally worth working on, totally Fight worth it. fighting yeah. for. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm so happy to have love back in my life. I, I really believe that women are invincible. We are. We, when we work together yes. and the most important like powerful connection is literally lineage, feminine mm-hmm. lineage. It's so true. Mm-hmm. So true. Um, do you guys know your sun rising and moon sign? Yes, of course. Do you know, of <laughs> course. Do you know <laughs> mine? Yes. Do you know mine? I probably know yours. Okay. I think you have a Taurus rising. Mm-hmm. And I, I, your moon, is it an Aries moon? I don't know, but I am a Gemini. You're a Gemini. I'm a Virgo yeah. with a Cancer rising and an Aquarius moon. Ooh. <laughs> and what <love>. are you? <laughs> I'm a Libra sun with a Cancer moon oh. and Aquarius rising. Oh, I'm right on the cusp of Virgo Libra on the 22nd <laughs> oh, of September. You are? Yeah, oh. so we're very we love that similar. day. We love that day. That's <laughs> Nanny's birthday. So <laughs> my nanny who raised me with my parents, <laughs> September 22nd, such a good birthday. Yeah, it is a good Virgo solid. Libra cusp is a special special time. We well, love Gemini's you. air signs. <laughs> thank you. What's okay. your birthday? June 7th. June 7th. And you're 29, I right? Am. Saturn just turned 30. Turn. Oh, oh, you're in your so Saturn close. return. We're I so know. Close. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a good time. And I got married when I was 29, right? And so, yeah, and you're engaged. Yeah, it's a if good you do the time. work, you should have the gift, the gift for, sure. for the Saturn return. Absolutely. And do you guys know your human design? Yes, of course. <laughs> I love manifester. It. She's a manifester. You're a manifester. Yeah. And I'm a generator. Oh my God. And what are you? Of course, you're a generator. <laughs> you, have, you had to generate all of that yeah. like over the last several years. Um, I'm a reflector. Oh, that's which oh is, you guys are very rare. I know. Yeah. We're the rare ones. Hmm. Yeah. Reflectors are 1% of the population. Manifestors are 10%. We're super rare. <laughs> so uh, cute. All of super my rare. chakra centers are wide open. There's no color in them in human design. So I wow. just soak in whatever's around me. Manifestors so you really need like to put up too. the protection. I do. Well, just yeah. so you know, we always fill the space with angels and all yeah. sorts of protection. Oh, I so we do so an so We're like, okay, <laughs> let's set an intention. Yes. Yeah. Let's connect. Let's ground. Anytime we go, I mean, when we don't, we're winging it and it's yes. not as good. <laughs> no, I feel the energy with you guys. I was pulling cards before I came oh. here from this tarot deck. Oh, what did you pull? I pulled... Mom um, does this... Oh, oh so I've fun. played cards she loves for you. Yeah. So I just got this new Oracle deck that's like a star seed Oracle deck. So that's like the Pleiadians and all that stuff. And what I pulled was, I pulled two. One of them said, you've done this before. Don't be nervous. And I was Aww. like, oh, because we're coming to interview you guys who I admire so much. And that was really cool because that had me feeling calm. And then I pulled another one. I can't even remember what it said, but it was like just beautiful colors like calming colors <laughs> it's a special deck I'll so send you guys sweet. the link cool and I love I love that you know your human design <laughs> my mom's a projector me, tried we've tried yeah. a lot oh of course <laughs> we've I seen mean, a lot we love we love all of this stuff so much so where do you guys see yourself going from here what's on the horizon what do you need mama oh god for me it's completely about um connecting with source and following that guidance complete like that's 
I'm 59 mm. second Saturn return. Yeah. And that's, that's my journey. And I hope, and I thank God for giving me the strength and for my body to be able to kind of do what it needs to do to carry me through. So that's been my, my fear actually. Mm-hmm. Erase, erase. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> erase, erase. <laughs> Wait, that's crazy. You're both in your Saturn return. Yeah, I had when I was twenty nine. She was my Saturn return yes, baby. That makes a ton of sense. <laughs> right. I and just exited my Saturn return. <laughs> it was a tough few years. Was it tough? Yeah, no oh kidding, my right? God. Yes. <laughs> no I kidding. I, was die. I mean, nothing like what you guys have experienced. Mine no, was but... all health related and it was very hard. Well, Similar. that's me. My mm-hmm. second is all mm-hmm. health related and it's hard. Totally. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that for... may... I, do you know if your Saturn is, do you what? know? I do know. Yeah. It's um, <laughs> my Saturn and Jupiter in the seventh house retrograde at like 27 and 23 degrees. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's health. It's health. My Saturn is in that Cap- health? Capricorn, which is all about work. I oh, that now it was I want to know. You, we got to look it up. We got to look it up. Yeah, we're going to look I it up. My, my Saturn and Jupiter are in Capricorn as well. Okay, that makes sense. In the seventh house, yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Capricorn Saturn return is related to health for sure, but it's also related to work. And it's like Mm. this resurgence of working really hard, which obviously you've written a book. You guys are on every talk show in the world. You're working very hard. We've been working our butts off. Yeah. But uh, all for a good reason, I hope. Totally. Oh, beyond. I mean, for me, I I also wrote a book and that was a huge part of my healing because the words came first before I could speak it. and. I actually narrated it for Audible. So it's out there now. It's so called cool. Still Learning. And I'm I'm really proud about it. I hope it it demonstrates all the red flags that I didn't see. But I'm also really motivated with the advocacy work and with my mom and our foundation and just making sure that the resources, the resources are available for those that need it. Um, because that was just such a huge gift that my mom gave to me. Mm-hmm. So many gifts for the world that you guys are creating together. So where can everyone find you? We've got Seduced, the documentary That's on stars, correct. which I watched on Showtime. So there's like many ways to oh, yes. that stars. Yeah. There's India's audio book on Audible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, called Still Learning. And there's Mom's, Mom's book, book, Captive. Captive. Yeah. <laughs> so it's basically I'll for you. Pa- perfect. <laughs> Parallel journeys. I'm fighting hell from the outside. She's describing hell from the inside mm-hmm. and showing all oh, the cool. red flags that one could now avoid as a, yes right. as a victim survivor mm-hmm. and me as the the loved one the concerned love mm-hmm. loved one of course yeah. two tough places to be Very. And you guys have risen and are just so poised and so strong and so beautiful and so inspiring you're so precious thank you I mean, we're trying to understand Instagram, which has yeah. been really difficult. Horrible. And like, I I'm not, I'm things. not great at it at all. You Thank are. You. I think you are. You're to me. You're I really mean, good. Okay. Okay. I think, well, you're both, I, I think you're both good. But we're, no, you have we, like we the long that. captions that are yes. very insightful. Yes. I like that. Okay. That, uh, that's me. I mean, that feels me very too, much yeah. me. But you I didn't know he's writing a paragraph. No, people are dying to know how you're doing, how you're feeling. Okay, good. Sharing the background. I'll let some more out. But I see how generous you are on your posts and i'm wondering this woman is describing that she's got these health challenges i don't have energy to even write like trans how do you do it yeah well i'm (laughs) still working on my boundaries in the sense that i don't know that i should be doing as much of that for my health but I know it means a lot to people as well to connect in that way. And You're like, very generous. Thank you. And my my audience is my community. They're my friends. I've been doing this for eight years. So I recognize like 90% of the names. So I'm mm, always like, yeah, so... oh yeah, how's your, how are you doing? Oh, and stuff. Sweet. But then to so communicate cool. with so many people every day, it is yeah. exhausting yeah. as a reflector as well. And manifester too. So I'm still working on it. But as far as like, Instagram and com- connecting with people. It's such a beautiful place to connect. Mm-hmm. When you do have the energy, it's nice to get back to people, but you also can't feel the pressure. And I have a lot of like business mentors in my life always reminding me, you don't have to respond to everyone. Oh, yeah. What kind of standard so are you setting yeah. up for yourself? And yeah. so I am working on that for my health because I am yeah, you know, I need trying to have that protection. But I think you guys are doing a great job. Thank you. I love all the messages from people that are just so kind and like oh, they just yeah. open up and share about their lives or other women who are in similar experiences or have 
right. had similar experience or are in them now. And they're right. like, help, I need something. And I mean, like, I feel like we, there's just so much to do. <laughs> yes, there right. is. And so much help, you know, to give people. Yeah. It is it's just crazy. I mean, I see how it happens. I almost joined a cult accidentally in Bali. So oh, which, I, which one? It was called, so it's called like the oneness blessing. I know. Oh yeah. God, you know, I it? know it. I went to India for three weeks to give, Diksha. to learn how to, I told oh, oh, Diksha. Oh my God. Yes. 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 Oh my God. I, about it. I signed up for it at <laughs> the yoga barn in Ubud and Bali, my favorite place to be. And I was <laughs> I was asking, there when I was pregnant with you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> I need to go back. I was asking my <laughs> friends who teach Kundalini, who just know all about that stuff. I'm like, I'm going to get trained as a oneness blessing person. And they're like, Jordan, that's, a cult. Thank God. And so they I, I didn't something. end up going. But I mean, I, I know myself. I was there alone on this quest because of my health. I had hives all over my body, couldn't digest food. Oh so I would have been super susceptible at that time. And Thank don't God. you think that people mm-hmm. who have health issues are particularly susceptible because the yes. medical system does not serve your needs? Yes. And so and you, you get more like and no more desperate because it's like living with this much pain is unbearable. It, it is. Yeah. And so something that my doctor, Dr. West, who I think you would love, yeah. told me, my mom was there when she told me this because we got all these test results back. My adrenals obviously are shot, not yeah. working, you know, from all the just chronic pain. And she said people with adrenals who are just so low functioning are healers because you, what you do is feel what other people are feeling. And so again, you're so vulnerable when you are in that healing space. And she just n- described everything about me. She's like, often they're vegan and that's why I'm all these things. And like, you must be just, you must just soak in everyone's energy. And, and yes, and we are the ones who go off and do these yogic, yogic paths and whatever it is. And, and that could end up in, you know, very dark places at times. At times. I mm-hmm. do know this on a spiritual level, and I'm. it will be a process to integrate this, hopefully quicker than well, not so quick, is that if I completely allow hmm. infinite wisdom, God, whatever you want to call it, to work through me, there's actually no burden to me. Because as a healer, it's like that energy just wants to work through me. But if I exactly. resist in any way, I'm still at all, learning that. Mm-hmm. Then, <laughs> then I feel pain because I'm right. not completely well, letting it work through me. So. And that's what anxiety is, in my, my opinion, as well. Anxiety is just that energy that wants to come through that we don't let it come through. Yeah. We don't know and how. So, right. It's been we a, it's a been learning. Taught. Exactly. We've been taught to do the opposite. Yeah. And all my mediumship mentors and people like that when I tell them I'm having these panic attacks they tell me just get quiet and listen to the voice that's trying to come okay, through I'll do that. which is the angels and or your higher self and our powerful higher self mm. it really helps and so I'm trying to carve out that time daily mm. with meditation and and putting myself first instead yeah. of putting everybody else first. And that's My hard God, to do. My God, we're so similar. It's such a mm-hmm. hard thing to mm-hmm. push. Yeah, because you want, I'm so, I'm such a generator. I want right. to produce, produce, produce. And it's the pain. It's like, I don't want to take time out to go do right. nothing or right. sit with myself. I so know. It's, it's a hard adjustment. But when adjustment. you think of it in the way of like everything that it's serving for your health and then, and then eventually for others as well, when you put yourself first in that way, that's what I try to tell myself too. Otherwise, it's too easy to yeah. just go off and yeah. keep doing things. And generators, as they say, <laughs> are the ones who need to take care of themselves the most okay. because you do do things for other people all the time. Mother, I my husband's a generator. Mm. And so, because you guys can get away with it, and generators are the ones that we can say, you know, I need you to do this, and you'll do it. And so that's him. I'm like, you need to go get the microphone now. And he did. He left work and went to the guitar center, like I was telling you guys, because I'm not going to do it. That's not who I am. So, but generators, they still have to She's advocate like, for themselves. I need yes. lunch. I, so who goes to make yeah, lunch? Yeah. Exactly. No, but usually exactly. I, I, I'm that person that gives, 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 and I end up feeling mm-hmm. depleted because I just want to please and like you know it feels good in the mm-hmm. moment but then at the end of the day I'm like oh my god I have it's no voice so I have no energy so I also need to learn that balance yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. I can't get All away with it anymore it's like I've hit a wall your body is yeah my body is saying stop and you came to the end of a long painful battle yeah and it's only natural 
You guys need to go on a healing retreat. I'm ready together. for Bali. <laughs> yeah, Bali. I'm ready for mm-hmm. Bali. I need to all go to Bali. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's my favorite place. I want to go so bad. Mm-hmm. You will. Whenever Yay. the world opens back up. Right. Guys, oh, I do wow. desperately need to pee, okay. though. <laughs> this, so. is, this is where we'll close okay. it out. And it's 444. <laughs> it's a great way to end. Oh, cool. It's an angel number, 444. So we'll close it out. Thank okay. you guys so much for Thank coming you. on. This was just so special. And... I feel honored. You're so like, uh, well, we yes. feel honored. Likewise. Thank you so Thank much. You so what much. a nice way to close the week. <laughs> I know. Yay. You're so Thank precious. you. You really Thank are. Thank you. So are you. Thank you. Okay. So I'm fully speechless. I still don't know what to say. I don't know how to end this episode, just like I didn't know how to start this episode because I'm just so blown away by Catherine and India. And I'm so honored that they came on. Fun fact, they actually appeared on the Ellen show the same day that I was able to interview them for TBB podcast. So I felt very special. And I know that we're just aligned in all of the soul ways. India blows me away. She's so brave with everything that she's been through and everything that she's overcome. And Catherine is just the mother that we all need. Everyone needs a Catherine Oxenberg in their life. And as you guys could tell, my mom was present for this interview, which was really special because we really feel so many parallels with India and Catherine. And they just remind me so much of me and my mom, even though all of our life situations and circumstances have been quite different. Um, There really are not a lot of separations between humans when you really love them and feel their energy because I feel like, okay, that could have been me and my mom. Like that could have been us. And I think that's the really important thing with the way that India and Catherine are spreading information and awareness in the world when it comes to cults and mind control and coercion. And I just know that they will both go on to do incredible things with this work. And I hope to have them both on again to talk even more about everything that they've overcome, how their healing is going, um, spiritual things, all the fun spiritual stuff that we connect on. And if you guys are looking, if you're just like, whoa, what is this? I didn't even know about any of this stuff. Then I highly recommend watching India's documentary, Seduced on Stars, and also reading her book, which is an audio book. So listening to her book and reading Catherine's book and also watching The Vow on HBO. And I also just want to give a little shout out to the beautiful Bonnie. If you guys have seen The Vow on HBO, then you know. You know about Bonnie and Mark. And Bonnie has been in TBB community for many years. And she is the reason that I discovered The Vow in the first place, which got me so interested in this whole entire story. And just a side note, even though I know that this is the end of the episode, I've been super obsessed with cults and cult psychology and coercion for as long as I can remember. And it's probably an obsession because I know how easily I could have gotten sucked in to something like this. So spreading this awareness is really important to me and really huge. If you know anyone who is in some kind of group that just feels uncomfortable, then reach out to them, take Catherine's tips, read Catherine's book, read India's book, because it's really hard to talk to someone who has been brain brainwashed and have them hear you and have them listen to you um because it's it's not they're not gonna listen right away and oh my gosh i've been in this situation i was telling Catherine in india i almost accidentally joined a cult in bali and not to make this about me because it's not about me at all what you should really do is just support india's work and support Catherine's work check them out online tell them that you found them from tbb community Tag us all on Instagram. If you have finished this episode, got to the end, if you're here, that means you have. So tag us, tell us what your favorite part was. Send us a group message or something on Instagram. This is why I have this podcast, to be able to share stories like these that are empowering, that are really important in the world. And where the world is headed, I believe, is a place of more unity, more love, less evil and Keith being put in prison for the rest of his life is 
is a really, really good step in the right direction. I'm so proud of India. I truly love her and I truly love Catherine, her mother. And I am so grateful to them for coming on and um, to all of you who are here listening. So thank you again. And if this podcast left you feeling inspired, I would love if you could take a few seconds to rate and review on iTunes and send me a screenshot to jordanandthebalancewand.com so I can thank you by sending you a free gift on email. With that, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to our sponsors, Sakara Life and array and nourish by nature made you can find all the discount codes in the show notes as well as links to Catherine and india's work and to all of the good documentaries about nexium okay i love you guys thank you so much for being here talk soon